Welcome everyone to Quantum Latino 2021 um, in Spanish. Bienvenidos a todos por la, a la primera edición de Quantum Latino 2021, 2021. Eh, estamos con muchas ganas de empezar, tenemos muchas, muchas ilusión con este evento y bueno, espero que disfrutéis. Si tenéis alguna duda, tenemos el chat, tenemos la, las conversaciones uno a uno, tenemos el networking. Cualquier pregunta que tengáis, estamos disponibles para vosotros. So here we are, we are available the whole time for you. We are just setting up everything to be sure that everyone is happy, how everything works. If you have any question, you can write anything in the chat or you can write directly to people if, if you want a one-on-one -on -one message. If you have any questions to our speakers today, directly write in the questions and answer or the chat for the session. And you can also raise your hand if you have specific question and you want to come on stage. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first speaker, Nicolas Faber. Welcome. And Hi. Nicolas is a postdoc researcher at the Center of New Technologies in Warsaw University. And he's going to talk about encoding a qubit into the continuous variable modes of a single photon. The stage is yours, Nicolas. Great, thanks. So he's a... Uh... The share screening is working, yes? Okay. So, um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me. Um, I am Nicolas Fabre, a postdoctoral researcher at Center in New Technology, affiliated with Warsaw University in Poland. And today I'm going to, to, to talk about uh, one of my works that I have done during my PhD thesis at Paris University and it's about uh, encoding a qubit into the continuous variable of single photon. In quantum information, there are two ways for encoding information uh, with a bosonic carrier. The first way is by using the degree of freedom of single photon. In FIS encoding, you are uh, considering the single photon subspace and the information is in the mode distribution. There are many examples of such a mode uh, for instance, you can use the polarization or the frequency to encode a qubit, or you can use uh, higher dimensional uh, Hilbert space, uh, such as time of arrival variable or the orbital angular momentum of flight to encode quantum information. The second way for encoding uh, quantum information is by using a particle number uh, a sensitive degree of freedom. In this encoding, uh, you are you are dealing with uh, a monomode space, but the information is inside the particle number distribution. A first example is, uh, well, it is possible to encode a qubit by, uh, by, by choosing uh, the two logical state as uh, the presence or the absence of single photons, or you can use uh, what it is called quadrature position momentum, which are continuous variable. And here you have a different type of uh, continuous variable state, coherent squeeze state, uh, single photon state, and Schrodinger cat state, uh, which are uh, many ways for encoding information by using uh, quadrature position momentum continuous variable and which are particle number sensitive degree of freedom. You are in a given mode, frequency, polarization, etc. But the information is again inside in the particle number distribution. Here you have uh, in this table all the possible ways for encoding quantum information. As I said, the degree of freedom of single photon, the particle number degree of freedom, and in each case, you can define uh, either a discrete or continuous variable. A discrete variable here corresponds to uh, in the degree of freedom of single photons to the polarization, to time beams. Uh, and, uh, but also, you can also consider higher dimensional uh, encoding, uh, such as uh, to use the transversal position momentum or the time frequency deg degree of freedom. In the particle number degree of freedom, as I said, you can use uh, what it is called the dual ray encoding, the absence of the presence of single photons to encode a qubit, or you can use uh, quadrature position momentum variable. Even if you are dealing with continuous variable at some point, especially for error correction uh, purposes, you must discretize a continuous variable. 
so that you are leading to define uh, a qubit. Uh, there are three three uh, three qubits which was defined which were defined uh, in the particular number degree of freedom, uh, and they are called the Schrodinger cat binomial and Gottsman Kitev and Presky state, and uh, in our group, what we have done is, um, by analogy of uh, the uh, continuous variable with different set of uh, of continuous variable, uh, time frequency is a quadrature position momentum one. We have defined a, a new qubit which consists of the discretization of uh, degree of freedom of single photons, and they correspond to what we, uh, we have called time frequency gap state by analogy with this one. There are third way for encoding information, which is called the hybrid one, and, but I am not to discuss about this. So what, what are this uh, Gottsman, Kitev, Ferpresky state? Uh, they has been defined in 2001 uh, by the three authors, and the two logical states are uh, the sum of squeeze state, which are slightly shifted from an amount of square root of pi. And since then, there are two experimental uh, uh, realization uh, in the superconducting and the trap ion platform. And they possess uh, great benefits for error correction and for uh, fault tolerant encoding. Uh, in our group, we have defined not a qubit into one bosonic mode, but a one qubit into the mode single photon. So instead of having one mode, many photons, here in this case, we have uh, one single photon, many modes. And uh, the time frequency GKP state is completely mathematically analogous to the uh, GKP state, but uh, the phys physical system is completely different because, uh, well, because it is different, a different set of continuous variable. And the time frequency GKP state is a microcom, which is a single photon with a frequency constructor. The uh, outline on my, on my talk is the following. I'm going to give a, a brief introduction on the single photon formalism such as to introduce the time frequency GKP state. Uh, then I will develop the uh, experimental implementation, how we can produce such a state, and I will finish by a few words on error correction. A single photon with frequency omega and that special mode A is defined by uh, this um, uh, creation operators apply on the vacuum state and it gives this uh, single photons. You have this very bosonic, very important bosonic commutation relation between uh, creation and annihilation operators at different, C, at different frequency omega prime and omega. And uh, I'm going just to come back uh, about the importance of this uh, uh, commutation relation. We Okay. Um, we can define uh, time of allowable variable uh, as the con canonically conjugated variable of a single photon on the detector just by uh, performing a fo the Fourier transform of the creation or here the annihilation operators at frequency omega. So this is the basic notation of uh, our formalism. Then what we have introduced is uh, frequency displacement operators. Uh, frequency displacement operators apply on single photon with frequency omega is going to shift the single photon uh, with some amount of delta and it can be written in this mathematical representation. Uh, it is also possible to apply such uh, operators on a single photon with time of arrival t and it's going to give this phase. In the same spirit, uh, here in red, you can define time displacement operators and it's going to shift a single photon with time of allowable t with some amount of beta. What it is very important is that frequency and time displacement operation do not commute, and you have this uh, additional phase. And the reason of this non commutativity between operators is coming from the fact that creation and annihilation operators do not commute. And this is why I'm going to say that time and frequency variable of uh, a single photon or of different excitation of the electromagnetic field at spatial mode A are not the one as a, as a classical field because the reason of non-commutation of the uh, time and frequency displacement operation comes from the quantization of the electromagnetic field as it is shown here. Then we can proceed to, um, to all the uh, continuous variables 
continuous variable formalism, which, which is uh, already developed for the quadrature position momentum one, but here for the time frequency uh, degree of freedom. Uh, for instance, we can uh, define the chronocyclic thickness distribution as one way to represent uh, a continuous variable uh, state. You are in the single photon subspace, but you are looking to the full spectral distribution of your quantum state. And it is a privileged uh, representation of your uh, quantum system, uh, especially for tomographic purposes, because you can directly measure marginal or cut of the Wigner distribution. It is fully uh, identical to the uh, quadrature position momentum Wigner distribution, which is written here, but uh, this di distribution, uh, the mode is fixed, the frequency is, is fixed, but you are looking at the uh, particle number distribution. The um, time frequency GKP state, uh, well, as I said, it is uh, two microcomb, which are slightly shifted from an amount of omega bar. And uh, microcomb is mean a uh, single photon with a frequency comb structure. And since it is a comb in frequency, it is also a comb in the temporal domain uh, but you have this uh, alternance of phase. The state that I have just shown here is not physical because it will require an infinite amount of energy to produce them um, because it possesses an infinite large envelope and each peak is actually monochromatic. But it is possible to, um, to uh, introduce a physical frequency time GKP state starting from the ideal one. The idea is first to apply on the ideal GKP state uh, a freak, a temporal noise, which is a time displacement operation multiplied by a Gaussian distribution in time. It's going to, to give uh, a frequency width of the full envelope of the, of the spectral distribution. But the state is not physical yet uh, because each peak is monochromatic. Then what we have to do is to uh, apply on this state uh, frequency displacement operation multiplied by a Gaussian distribution in frequency, and uh, it's going to give uh, a width for each peak. The width of the envelope and the width of each peak is interpreted as time and frequency noise because this formalism is actually reminiscent from the uh, cross uh, operation formalism. Because of this redundancy of information, uh, the time frequency GKP state are actually designed to be robust against shift, in small shift in time and frequency. To, sh to show this, uh, uh, we can uh, first um, define the uh, zero and one uh, time of arrival beam. Here, this is the time domain. And we are going to consider as an input uh, of an optical fiber uh, this uh, zero logical state. Uh, and it is uh, the sum of uh, all these temporal wave packets center on each of these uh, time of arrival uh, being up. Owing to um, dispersive effect uh, inside the uh, optical fibers, the state as a, the output state is the following. Uh, each temporal wave packet is going to be broadened according to the dispersive effect. And what you can see here is uh, actually a small probability of measuring a one while uh, the initial encoding was a zero. And so that in this encoding, uh, it is interpreted as a bit flip operation, uh, X poly matrix uh, operation. But owing to the redundancy of information and despite the, the presence of errors, um, the state, uh, the, the GKP state, the, you can define uh, some threshold from which it is uh, possible to correct the state. So that the, uh, the, the, the encoding is said to be fault tolerant. You, you have some errors, but it's okay. It is possible to correct it. As for the, ex for the experimental implementation of such a state, it is possible to create it with this um, optical integrated waveguide device. Uh, the device is a, a sandwich of uh, different uh, semiconductor uh, materials, uh, which, which is uh, optimized to uh, increase the nonlinearity process inside the core. 
classical, um, classical pump, which is coming from here, here picture in red, is going to uh, create by uh, spontaneous parametric down conversion, a pair of photons called the idler and the uh, signal. The fissure entangled photon are in the uh, telecom wave range. Uh, in addition, we have to mention that this uh, device is working at home temperature, and it is uh, actually a very good point for uh, quantum technology application because it does not require to uh, cryogenic temperature to work. Here, what you have represented is the joint spectral intensity. It is uh, the, the probability of measuring a photon with frequency omega s, the signal, and another and the other photon with frequency omega i. And the full joint spectral intensity is delimited by two physical processes, energy conservation in the omega plus direction at 45 degrees, and momentum conservation, phase meshing condition at 135 uh, degrees. So what you can see uh, from this uh, experimental data is that the state is uh, entangled in frequency, it is anti-correlated. But in addition, if you perform a zoom, which can be done uh, with uh, the stimulated emission technique, uh, which provides higher resolution, uh, you see this constructure. Why? The reason is that uh, because the, uh, the device is placed into the air, and the refractive index of the semiconductor device is 3.3, then it is a, a natural fabry perot cavity and the uh, pair of photon is going to perform some back and forth uh, before leaving the cavity. And this is what you can see here, only the modes which are allowed by the cavity uh, are, are the ones which we can observe. We have at least uh, from uh, experimental data that uh, 500 peaks. There are two ways for understanding the state uh, outside the cavity. Uh, we can write the wave function as a non-tangle uh, QDIP pair, uh, where you have this anti-correlation in frequency um, with respect to the frequency, the degenerative frequency of the spontaneous parametric down conversion process. But there is a no, an alternative uh, uh, decomposition that we have uh, that, that we have shown in our paper is that we can consider the state here, the wave function outside the optical cavity as actually an entangled time frequency GKP state. So it is a qubit decomposition. It is a little more involved than just a change, a basis change, okay? But this representation is um, actually relevant if we want to find a solution for performing error correction. This is why this uh, quantum circuit decomposition of the state is useful. And the state that we have here is directly the one obtained uh, after the nonlinear process. But before explaining why this uh, decomposition is useful for error correction, I want to mention that uh, my former experimental group in these uh, two papers uh, has, has proposed two ways for performing the operation in this encoding and obtain a signature of this uh, manipulation uh, thanks to angumantel interferometer. If you want to see more detail, you can ask or, uh, later. About uh, error correction, I want first to give the main principle of error correction before uh, showing the uh, circuit decomposition picture. The main idea is you have a qubit. Uh, which carries the information that you want uh, and that you want to extract. Um, but it, it has been affected by a large amount of nodes. Here, what I'm dealing with is this uh, temporal uh, dispersive effect. To, uh, to be able to uh, correct the state, uh, what one procedure is uh, to entangle this less healthy qubit with a more healthy one proceed to a measurement of the more alpha qubit, you don't want to destroy this one, and then uh, to proceed to a subsequent uh, series of operation. And entanglement with a more alpha qubit, measurement plus uh, maybe other operation is going to partially correct the state that you want. The two photon state after the SPDC process is represented here. Uh, this is directly what we have 
uh, outside the optical cavity uh, after this uh, black line. And uh, with a inspiration from uh, the quadrature continuous variable uh, formalism, or what it is called actually the STEAM error correction scheme, if we perform a Gaussian measurement, which is in this uh, type of degree of freedom, the measurement of the time of arrival variable, uh, it is possible to correct the state uh, where the noise is coming from the generation itself. So it's not exactly the picture that I have uh, previously um, presented, where, you, you will, where uh, the state is actually uh, designed to be robust against noise, which is introduced by uh, an optical fiber. But here, in our picture, it is a simple experiment we, which, uh, which could be uh, shown, uh, is that you can correct the state uh, where the noise is coming from the generation itself, and so that uh, it is a, a way for preparing a time frequency GKP state. But it is also possible to consider another situation where the quantum circuit decomposition will be exactly uh, similar, but here uh, represented in another fashion. You can start from uh, two single photons which was generated independently. One of them, the two of them are going to cross some optical fibers, but let's say that the optical fiber A will introduce a larger amount of temporal noise dis uh, on temporal dispersive effect. And so that you have these uh, two uh, logical states. One is very sick and the other is less sick. But you want the information that is inside the very sick qubit. So what you have to do again is to untangle the very sick qubit with the less sick qubit to perform a temporal measurement exactly as here. At in this time, you are uh, being able to uh, correct the noise coming from this uh, channel and to uh, partially correct the state that uh, you want. With Philip Hopschedek, a postdoc at Chicago University, uh, we are developing a new teleportation-based error cor correction protocol. Uh, the protocol is actually exactly the same as the teleportation of a polarization qubit state, but here translated in, in the time frequency uh, degree of freedom of single photon. Uh, I'm not going to detail here because I don't have the time, but uh, the idea is this protocol allows you to both uh, perform error correction and also teleport the state, two action in one. In conclusion, uh, I have presented the uh, reason of non-commutativity of the time frequency phase space, which comes from a particular aspect of the field. Uh, I have uh, introduced a new qubit, which is robust, I guess, temporal and frequency shift. And uh, I have uh, shown different uh, theoretical proposals for error correction in this set of time frequency variable of single photons. I would like also to mention uh, a new work that I have done with my collaborator, Simone Felicetti, and uh, which makes use of such grid state in a quantum metrology protocol. Lastly, I would like to thank my collaborators, my uh, former PhD supervisor, Perola Minman and Han Keller, um, my day-to-day -day collaborators, Simone Felicetti, Philip Hopschedek, and in, the, uh, in my uh, former experimental team, uh, Sarah Ducci, Florent Babu, Maria Ines Amanti, and I would like also to uh, thank my funding at Poland. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Nicola. That was great. Um, I'm going to ask you some of the questions that we have in the chat. Uh, Emilio is asking, could you comment how this qubit encoding of continuous variable relates to encryption with the CVQKD protocol? Uh, in CVQKD protocol, we are dealing with uh, quadrature position momentum variable, and uh, they are quite different in terms of uh, manipulation uh, from this uh, time frequency degree of freedom. Uh, so it's not at all the same technology, it's not at all the, uh, um, for instance, you are not going to use homodyne detection in this type of encoding. Um, 
because uh, you are not interested by the particular number distribution. Because when you are dealing with um, a single photon encoding, uh, what you want to do is just to count photons and to perform frequency uh, or time uh, measurement. Thanks, Nicola. Um, Christian is asking, what is the precision in getting entangled photons and how scalable is the system? Uh, the scalability is, uh, wing, uh, is of course, uh, a major issue for any single photon encoding because in general, sin single photon do not want to talk with uh, each other. They are quite shy. Um, and it depends on the uh, ex experimental uh, technology. Uh, right now, for the time frequency degree of freedom, uh, for the scalability, uh, I, I can see uh, more um, what I have uh, more frequency bin splitter operation, uh, which are uh, the main ingredient, the C naught operation to perform entanglement between uh, different uh, single photons. And uh, they are quite crucial, but right now the technology is only at the beginning. Understood. Um, Tim is asking what are the limiting factors for a high key exchange rate? Do you have any comparison to already? existing systems? Um, no, uh, I'm not an expert on QKD. Uh, this is something that I am working with, uh, with Philip Hopschedek, uh, which is, who is uh, an expert on, on QKD. And we are trying to really find uh, what are the benefits from this encoding uh, for quantum communication purposes. Any more questions for Nicola? Apparently not. So thanks again, Nicola. That was a great start of the event. And see you, everyone, in the next session in a couple of minutes. Bye. Thank you. Bye.